Hey guys, welcome back. Kyle with Ultra Precision Technologies. It has been a day or so, and we have the fan duct printed. This is the Linus Tech Tips uh, CMP 170HX fan duct that they had linked in the description of the video they did where they talked about the GPU. So I'm going to use this as a starting point just to get this card running and check some numbers and stuff on it. I have a couple different plans for different cooling setups for this. So one thing they talked about in their video is when they added a fan onto this because of the reduction of going 120 mil down to the, the card inlet. Uh, they said there's a lot of splashback coming through the fan, which is when the blades spin, but not all the air can go out the duct. So the air actually ends up escaping and coming back out through the fan. So one solution for this splashback that I had was to use these radiator shrouds that I have. Uh, usually what these are used for is you put one of these onto a Let's pretend this power supply grill is a radiator. If you just put a fan on, you have a big dead spot where this fan motor is, so air doesn't flow through the radiator on this section if it's right up against the radiator like that. So I designed these fan shrouds that you'd put onto your radiator first and then put the fan on top. And what that allows is all the surface area, the whole square here, to have air flowing through the radiator. But today what we can use these shrouds for, when this is bolted on here and we're getting splash back, I can put the shroud on here and then add another fan, potentially, I don't know how well this will work, on top to help blow the blowback from the first fan back through it. Just basically trying to increase static pressure. So first thing I need to do is figure out how I'm going to position this all. So give me a second. So I want to turn the board this way, but the issue I'm having is because this board is just sitting right on the table, the PCI slot for the graphics card sticks out past the board and it's causing it some, this board shouldn't just be sitting on the table. So we're gonna use uh, some motherboard standoff feet that I actually sell on my store. The motherboard feet are installed. Now you have to excuse the horrible colors. Uh, these were actually custom printed uh, for somebody that ordered on my store. And these were just some leftovers that I had because he wanted mixed match colors. Um, but for our functional purposes, they work great. The, you can see the PCI slot's not hitting the desk anymore. And now the board's off the desk, which is more ideal. I have uh, a new design coming out for uh, like a desktop type test thing like this. Basically be more of a tray, like this is an ITX one. It's got a cutout for the CPU cooler, but um, for our purposes for today for testing, these are perfect and they are available right now. Link in the description. First thing we need to do is remove this uh, bracket here. Uh, I got the feet installed, graphics cards in. Um, this is the Linus Tech Tips 3D printed fan duct and this is just like a consumer standard, like an Arctic 120 millimeter PC fan. Probably not gonna be enough, but I'm just curious to see um, what happens. And then after that fan, we'll go to a, a Corsair. This is like a static pressure optimized radiator fan. Uh, and then after that, I have a couple of these 3000 RPM. These are for actually from buyminers.ca. So we'll try a couple of these with the shroud in between them to prevent kickback. We'll see how that goes. So without further ado. And I do have the HDMI plugged straight into the board because obviously there's no display on this card. Okay guys, as you can see, MSI Afterburner picks it up as NVIDIA CMP170HX. Uh, I am just using a uh, nice hash because this is just like a test bench type of system I just use. I use this for the simplicity of switching algorithms and stuff. Um, but let's see, so right now we're idling at uh, 32 on the core. Um, I'm gonna run this at 80% power limit. I did turn up this fan header in BIOS to full speed, so this is just kind of everything it's got. There is hardly any air coming out of this at all and i can feel the blowback i was talking about earlier so actually i can feel the air blowing out this way and that's just because this is a standard pc case fan and it's it's definitely not optimized to push through resistance like this so i don't expect this will work well but let's find out what happens so i can see pretty sharp spike in temperature here there we go hash rate 157 at 200 watts Look at that efficiency, guys, 782. Wow. I'll let this run here for a minute and see what we balance out at for temperatures on the core. 
It's been running for less than two minutes and you can see this temperature curve is just not good. So I'm gonna just probably stop this around 85C. I'm just curious to see if it does taper off. It looks like it's just steadily climbing. And that's just simply because this standard case fan cannot push enough air through the card. Like there's hot air coming out of this side, but it's, I can feel way more blowback right here. And I don't know when this card actually thermal throttles, but we seem to be bouncing off 85 right now. Uh, oh, here's the core clock. So you can see we are thermal throttling right now. Yeah, 85C. So this one's a fail, but we kind of expected that. So we got the static pressure Corsair fan on here. Now already I can tell you that there is still quite a bit of blowback. I can actually feel the air being bounced back at my hand right here, but I can actually feel a lot more air coming through the card. I'm gonna use the same settings, uh, 80% NMSI afterburner. The card is still hot from running it previously. We're seeing about 50 degrees right now, but the main goal is I just wanna see if this thing will thermal throttle with kind of a more consumer radiator fan. So I'll give this a few minutes. I guess I probably should mention ambient air is about 23.5 degrees. We're at 75 now. The graph is a lot, a lot more gradual. One other point, this first fan I tried was just an NZXT case fan. I thought it was an Arctic cooling fan, but it's just a basic NZXT case fan, 1000 RPM. Uh, this Corsair static optimized one is running about 2000 RPM and uh, temperature seems to level off around 78. But uh, my core clock has been falling here a little bit, so uh, I believe I still am thermal throttling. It's locked right in around 200 watts. Yeah, we've dropped down to 9, 960. We might be in the early stages of thermal throttling. Let's try with the 3000 RPM fans. Next up, we have one of the byminers.ca 3000 RPM uh, fans. See how this one does. Definitely a little noisier. Oh, interesting. So there's there's quite a big gap around the edge of the fan between the, the frame and the actual blade. And I can actually feel quite a bit of air coming out around this edge. But there's quite a bit of air coming at the backside too. So we'll see how that goes. Get it fired up here. It says 3000 RPM, sounds like 3000 RPM, so. So we're about two minutes in. This thing is absolutely crushing shares. Core clock seems to be holding steady around uh, 1080, 1065. Our temperature still climbing, but might be starting to plateau. We'll give it a few more minutes. So the miner has been running for six minutes now and it does look like we have leveled off around 73 degrees celsius the core clock appears to be maybe just slightly thermal throttled because it was around 1095 1080 uh, megahertz and we've dropped down now to about uh, 1050 1060 so let's try adding a second fan onto this with the shroud and see if that makes a difference let's try without the shroud first well, I guess I'm just going to kind of hold this here for a minute because I'm too lazy to unscrew everything. I feel there's air pressure trying to force them apart. And I guess my hand also will be blocking airflow, so let's hold it more like this. And I'll hold it here for a minute and we'll see if the temperatures drop. Okay, so these fans are duct taped together. We'll see where it plateaus out at for temperature. So I just took a little decibel reading of this thing. I'll throw it up on the screen down here somewhere. Um, it looks like we've, uh, with these two fans, pushing against each other. There's quite a bit of turbulence and noise. So I'm thinking the fan shroud of nothing else will make this quieter, but we'll see if it makes it more effective. Um, we seem to have stopped dropping around 60, 60, uh, which is a pretty good improvement. Uh, and that's just, again, improving the static pressure, like dropping from all this down to this tiny little thing. And there we go. The duct is installed between them. Uh, it changed the noise. Uh, it didn't make it quieter, as you can see from the decibel readings right here. Uh, it just changed the pitch a little bit. Um, and we're also not cooling any better. We're still at 66C, which is actually, I find that very interesting. So it doesn't matter if you just sandwich these fans together or if you actually leave an air gap between them. You know, they I guess they move 
the same static pressure through the card. So interesting. Now remember guys, these fan shrouds were not, this is not their intended purpose. They're for like water cooling for radiators to give you more airflow through more fins uh, and to clear up that dead spot in the center of the fan where the motor sits. Um, but I just thought I would try it out here and, and see how it goes. But we're holding dead steady at 66. So um, same as just sandwiching the fans together. So one other consideration here, guys, is this Linus Tech Tips fan duct doesn't take advantage of, there's actually cooling slots uh, or this black plastic covers it up. The card's actually open right here underneath this black plastic. So this, this duct here could actually be the full height of the card with a cutout around the CPU pin um, to allow more airflow through more easily with less restriction. So that's something I'm going to look at designing. But anyways, guys, let me know what you think of this. How would you cool this card? Because I am going to design something from scratch. I don't know. I think it makes sense for the air to come out the PCI slot. But if I'm going to design something, I want it to be able to fit in as many applications as possible. Like if this could possibly fit in like a VETA frame or um, be its own standalone type cooler. I'm not sure. But yeah, how would you? I think I'm thinking about centering this more, this, this fan duct, and uh, definitely making it take advantage of all this real estate here that's just blocked off right now and just doing a cutout around this CPU power connector on the card. But at least for now guys, the card's running. We learned that a NZXT stock case fan will thermal throttle immediately. A Corsair static pressure fan, 2000 RPM, almost does it. Maybe in really, really cold ambient temperatures, this could keep it cold enough, but still thermal throttled. And one of these 3000 RPM fans barely touches thermal throttle at 23.5 degree ambient, but two of them is keeping the card happy around 66 steady. If you guys have any ideas about how I can cool this card or, or what shape the fan duct should be or anything, I will leave my email in the video description and you guys can just, uh, sketch something on a piece of paper and take a picture and send it to me or you can drop something even in like microsoft paint or if you guys do cad you can do a really basic uh, maybe like a tinker cad sketch or something and let me know how you think i should build a fan duct that will be compatible with a lot of different people's mining setups and uh it's something that i can make and get out on my store so guys links for everything will be in the description you can follow us over on Instagram. I'll leave a link to the listing for these feet. You don't have to get tacky orange and blue ones. We do usually sell most of them in black, but like I showed earlier briefly that we are gonna be making those full-size motherboard trays pretty soon for similar functionality, but with easier deployment because these are kind of fiddly to hold them and put the screws in. And yes, I do have an RGB remote just kind of jammed under the card to kind of hold it straight because there's no nothing holding the PCI. Even if you guys just want to leave a comment down below trying to describe to me how I could cool this card better or what kind of duct design I should make, I'll definitely look out for those comments. And I'm just going to let this thing run in the meantime because the thermals are in check for now. If you guys like this video, make sure to subscribe for more videos like this. I do really like to design things. Um, that's, that's kind of the whole point of my store. And I encourage you guys to just go check it out. Just even just go browse through it, links in the description for my store, hit the bell icon and set the notifications for all so you don't miss any of my videos. And I'll see you in the next one.